Hi there, my name is Mr. Code and in this video we're going to talk about Kruskal's algorithm. And before going into the details, let me first give you an overview of what we're going to talk about. So first of all, we're going to describe the problem itself. Then we're going to come up with a solution and at the same time I will give an example and you can solve this exercise on your own. First, then we'll uh, go into the details about the answer. Then we're going to explain the algorithm and because we've already uh, seen how the solution works, I'm just going to give a few more details on Kruskal's algorithm. Then we're going to give the pseudocode of the algorithm. And finally, we're going to prove the solution to the problem. So let's start with describing the problem. And this description of a problem is a bit Pokemon Go flavored. For this example, you have to imagine the following. So imagine this, there are eight Pokestops located in your area and you want to visit all of them. Then each Pokestop can be reached via another Pokestop. And the third thing to keep in mind is that every connection has a positive distance, which is of course quite realistic. So a distance greater than zero. And the most important thing is that the sum of the distances of all chosen connections must be minimal. So if this is the overview of all Pokestops and their connections, then for example, for Pokestop 1 and Pokestop 2, there is a connection in between, which has a distance of 5. So this is how it works. And in case if you're wondering why there's only one path from Pokestop 7 to Pokestop 8, well, that's because there are two Snorlaxes on the way. These fat Pokemons are always an obstacle. Well, yeah. So let's come up with some formal notation for this problem. Well, the distance of a connection is indicated by D, which takes as input two Pokestop IDs. For example, D with input one and two is the same, of course, as D with input two and one, which equals five. So the distance between Pokestop one and Pokestop two is five, for example. And then the question that is very important for this example, that's what this example is about, is that what is the minimum sum of distances of the connections that connect all Pokestops? So if we have this map of Pokestops, what we want to do with this map is to connect all Pokestops in such a way by choosing a set of connections that all Pokestops are connected, but at the same time the sum of their distances must be minimal. Okay, so let's directly just go to, to the solution of this problem. And the key to the solution in order to get the minimum sum is to create a minimum spanning tree. And this is because, well, a minimum spanning tree is a tree in which there is a minimum spanning. That's what the name says. But this means that all vertices are connected within this tree and the weights that are on the edges to all the vertices, the sum of it is minimal. There's a minimum spanning. So this is what we want in order to get the minimum sum for the example with our Pokestops. Then the question of course is, cool, but how do we create a minimum spanning tree? Well, this is of course important. So I have created a step-by-step -step guide for a way to produce a minimum spanning tree. So in this step-by-step -step guide, you do the following. There are four steps, and this might be a little abstract for now, but once we go through it and we do an example, you probably get it. Okay, so the, in the first step, we create set A, which is initially equal to the empty set. And we create set P, which is initially equal to E, the set of all edges. Then we go to step two. And in step two, we choose an edge and P of minimum distance. We call it E. And if adding E to A creates a cycle, then remove E from P. If not, we move E from P to A. So what we do is we have those two sets P and A, and we're going to either move or just remove edge E, which is the minimum edge in set P to A. And this depends on whether there is a cycle. So if there are in set A, 
edges that can create a cycle then we just remove e so we don't take e into account anymore because a is going to be the set which is going to have the edges for the minimum spanning tree and in the minimum spanning tree or in a tree in general there are no cycles so we don't want any want any cycles in there then we move on to step three and in step three we say that if p is not empty so if we didn't go over all edges yet then go to step two because we have to go over all edges in order to process them and check whether they have to go to set a and if we're done then we can go to step four and in step four we simply say that we're going to output the minimum spanning tree which is v comma a and v is the set of all the vertices so this is how we produce a minimum spanning tree this is how we could do it and this is actually already a known algorithm because this is Kruskal's algorithm this is what this whole video is about this is a way to produce a minimum spanning tree okay so now that we've seen a step by step guide Let's directly apply Kruskal's algorithm. Let's directly apply the step-by-step -step guide. So the question here is, given the graph above, and this graph is the Pokemon Go flavored example, what is the minimum spanning tree? And also, what is the minimum sum of distances of all edges that connect all the vertices? And if you want to do this exercise on your own first, and you have to use Kruskal's algorithm, so you have to take into account the step-by-step -step guide that I just provided you with. If you want to do that on your own, I think it's really brave. You probably should do that. You would learn a lot from it. But for now, I will just directly go into the solution. So here's the answer. What we're going to do is, of course, start with step one. And in step one, we said that we have a set A and set P. A is initially equal to the empty set, and P is initially equal to E. This is what I've done. This is the original graph, and this is the graph without the edges. So the set of edges is here empty, and here it contains all edges that are in the graph. That's step one. In step two, we're going to take the minimal edge, so the, the edge with the minimal distance, and we're going to uh, verify whether this would create a cycle in the set that we're building for the minimum spanning tree. So, 2 is the edge with the minimum distance well because there there are no edges yet in set a we can directly move it to the set a because it won't cause any cycles that's the condition that we're giving it in step two so it doesn't create a cycle thus we move edge e from p to a so let's do that so here's the edge with distance 2 we just simply moved it from p to a next on we're going to step 3 and check whether p is empty well obviously p is not yet empty because there are a lot of edges left so let's go to step 2 again to the next iteration and then we're going to again take the edge with minimum distance which is in this case obviously the edge with minimum distance 3 it won't cause any cycle because well if we add it at this edge to set A, there won't be any cycle. So we can simply move the edge from P to A. So this is what we do. Then we're going again to check whether P is empty, but it's not, etc. etc. So we're going to move again to step two. And in step two, we're again going to take the edge with the minimum distance, which is now the edge with distance five. Since it won't cause any cycle, we can just move it from set P to A. This is what we're going to do. It's an A. Then the edge with the minimum distance is seven. So we're going to check whether it creates a cycle, but well, it doesn't. So we're, we can just add this edge to A. Then the edge with the minimum distance is the one with distance 11. This actually will create a cycle. So what we're going to do now, according to the step-by-step -step guide, is that this condition is now through. There is, there will be created a cycle. So we're going to remove the edge from P. So this is what we're going to do. It just simply remove. Then we're going to the next edge with the minimum distance. Well, this is something interesting because now there are two edges with the minimum distance. Distance 13 and again distance 13. Actually, it doesn't really matter which one you take. You just have to pick one. So let's, for example, pick this one, the edge from vertex 3 to vertex 6. As it won't create a cycle, we can simply move the edge from P to A. So that's what we're going to do. Then, as said, this will be the edge with the minimum distance. As this actually will create a cycle, we can simply remove 
remove the edge with distance 13 from P, so that's what we do. Then the edge with minimum distance again occurs twice. This is distance 17, this is distance 17, this is the minimum distance. In this case, for the answer, it actually matters which edge you take, because if you take this edge, we have to move it to A, but this edge would then create a cycle. And the other way around, if we first choose this edge, then this would create a cycle, but this one would create a cycle. So therefore, Kruskal's algorithm creates a minimum spanning tree. Minimum spanning tree doesn't have to be unique. There can be multiple, as you see now. But let's just take this edge with minimum distance 17. And as said, we can just move it to A. So that's what we will do. And we will just remove this one because it will create a cycle. Then the edge with minimum distance is one with distance 19. As it won't create a cycle, we can just move it to A. There we go. And there's something interesting now because all vertices are connected now. And this means that whenever we want to verify whether we have to move another edge from P to A, this means that we will create a cycle because all vertices are already connected. So that is what we're going to do now actually in the upcoming iterations. So the edge with the minimum distance now is the one with distance 23. We're going to remove it. Then the edge with minimum distance is the one with 29. We're again going to remove it. And then the final edge is of course the edge with minimum distance for the moment. Again, this will create a cycle, so we're going to remove it. Now, set P is actually empty, so we're going to step three, and in step three, the condition doesn't hold anymore, so we can go to step four, because P is empty. And in step four, we simply output the minimum spanning tree, which is V, A. And this is already a part of the answer, because one of the questions was, what's the minimum spanning tree? So this is a minimum spanning tree for the Pokemon Go flavored example. But we also have the question that says, what is the minimum sum of distances of all edges that connect all vertices? Well, the answer to this is actually pretty simple because we've created the minimum spanning three and this is what we needed in order to get the minimum sum. All we have to do is sum up all the distances of the edges. And this is the minimum sum of distances of all edges that connect all vertices. So the answer to this is the sum of all the edges, which is two plus three plus five, plus 7 plus 13 plus 17 plus 19 which is 66 and this is the answer to the question so this is the minimum spanning tree for the pokemon go flavored example and this is the answer for the minimum sum of distances of all edges that connect all the vertices so based on the mst we can deduce what the minimum sum is for this particular example okay so now that we've seen how to solve an exercise and how to create a minimum spanning tree how to develop it based on kruskal's algorithm i just want to share a few more details about Kruskal's algorithm that I think are important and of which I think I should stress they're important. So let's start with the first detail. So Kruskal's algorithm is an algorithm that produces a minimum spanning tree of a given connected weighted graph. And I underlined an algorithm because there are multiple algorithms for producing a minimum spanning tree. For example, Prim's algorithm is also an algorithm that produces a minimum spanning tree. So there are multiple and it produces a minimum spanning tree. As we've seen in the example earlier, there can be multiple minimum spanning trees for one graph. So the minimum spanning tree doesn't have to be unique. And then also the graph should be connected. So in the case of the Pokemon flavored example, all Pokestops had to be connected. That was one of the requirements and it was weighted. Then the second detail is that Pascal's algorithm is a greedy minimum spanning tree algorithm, which means it has a greedy method for producing a minimum spanning tree. It namely every time picks the edge with the minimum distance and if there's no cycle it will use this edge for building the answer so it greedily uses this method then the third detail has to do with the difference with prim's algorithm because well, prim's algorithm grows only one three while kruskal's algorithm grows a collection of threes and this is something that we've seen earlier for example here i mean this is a three and this is a three and in the end we will merge these threes so we grow a collection of threes while prim algorithm grows only one three okay so now let's have a look at the pseudo code of the algorithm and this is going to be easy as we've already discussed how to apply a Kruskal's algorithm and for the pseudo code we have to take into account these two properties namely the first one is that each time we're going to take the edge with the minimum distance and the second one is that each time we have to check whether the edge doesn't create a cycle in set a 
the set that we're going to use in order to create the minimum spelling three. So for checking whether there are cycles, we're going to use the disjoint set data structure so that we can actually check within the pseudocode whether there is a cycle. And for picking the edge with minimum distance each time, we're going to sort all edges ascending on their weight. So the first weight, so weight one, should be smaller or equal than weight two, and weight two should be smaller or equal than weight three, etc. And we're going to use this order for the following. So initially we have set A, which is the empty set. Then for each vertex U in the set of vertices, we're going to create a set for it. So every vertex gets its own set. Then for each edge in the set of edges, we're going to check whether the set of u is equal to the set of v and if they aren't there is no cycle but if they are equal then there is a cycle so this is the cycle check and this has to do with the following imagine this for example we have a vertex u and a vertex v and the vertex that we should verify is going to be between u and v well if we get the set of u then this is going to be the set containing vertex u containing this vertex and containing vertex V because they're connected. And when we're going to get the set of vertex V, we're going to get the set of vertex V, this vertex and vertex U again. So they're the same set. And if they're the same set, we're going to create a cycle if we're going to add the edge between U and V. And we don't want to do that because we don't want any cycles in A3. So we check whether they, the sets aren't equal. And if that's the case, we're going to add the edge to the set of edges for the minimum spending three and then we're going to union u and v so then we're going to actually union the sets of u and v and that's what we're going to do for each edge and when then done all edges that have been added to a are the edges that we want for the minimum spanning three so then we simply return a and that's it for the pseudocode so it's quite easy it's quite similar to what we've done earlier on but then an important question of course is cool but what's the running time of the algorithm? This is, of course, important as well, because we don't want a slow algorithm. Well, the answer to this is this. The sorting takes total the big O of the amount of edges times the logarithm of the amount of edges, because we can do this with, for example, merge short. This for loop will at most take the amount of vertices because we have to do this for every vertex. And this for loop will take big O of the amount of edges times the logarithm of the amount of vertices because we're going to do this for every edge until all vertices are connected. And then when they're connected, we don't have to go over this loop again and again. We won't reach these statements, so it will be multiplied with the logarithm of the amount of vertices. Then the dominant big O will be the amount of edges times the logarithm of the amount of edges. So the running time of the algorithm is big O of the amount of edges times the logarithm of the amount of edges. So that's the answer for the question. Now let's finally have a look at the following. We're going to prove the solution to the problem. So this is going to be a theorem. Kruskal's algorithm is correct and this is the proof for it. So let A be the edge set which has been selected by Kruskal's algorithm and u, v be the edge to be added next. It is sufficient to show that there is a cut which respects a and u, v is the light edge crossing that cut. So we have to show these two properties that there is a cut which respects a and u, v is the light edge crossing that cut. That's sufficient to show that Kruskal's algorithm is correct. So first of all, let a prime be equal to v prime comma e prime this is the tree of the forest a that contains u so consider this cut v prime comma v minus v prime so v prime comma the rest of v and secondly there is no edge in a that crosses the cut it respects a and thirdly as adding u comma v to a prime does not create a cycle u comma v crosses the cut besides since u comma v is currently the smallest edge u comma v is the light edge crossing the cut so we satisfy both properties and because of that we have shown that Kruskal's algorithm is correct so qed that's what we had to prove okay so i guess that's it i've described what the problem is we have come up with a solution in the Kruskal's algorithm for doing this we have together done an exercise on this we have seen a step-by-step -step guide and actually applied it we have discussed some major details of Kruskal's algorithm we have given the pseudocode of the algorithm we have discussed the time complexity of it and we've actually proven Kruskal's algorithm so i guess that's a nice way to end this video so if you thought this video was useful make sure to hit the thumbs up to give 
give it a like. If you still have any questions, please make sure to use the comment section. And if you want to support this channel, make sure to subscribe. So stay cool. Bye.